in front. We got a great lineup. Like I said, we got a lot of comics here. They are gonna bust your balls. And ladies, you will grow balls just to get them busted. They're that good, honestly. <laughs> I have no idea where that came from, but that's all right. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my friend, Mr. Roger Breedlove. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I'm a traveling comic. I'm gonna travel from this side of the stage to this side. Uh, no, on a serious note, I'm uh, I'm originally from Arizona. Anybody? Anybody? No. One? One? Oh, great. There's two of us in the house tonight. Watch out, folks. We're here coming to get you. I'm originally from Arizona, from a small town up in northern Arizona called Let's Get. And yes, I graduated from Let's Get High. You know, and you can tell, you know, that I'm from Arizona because after so many years, I've developed this amazing farmer's tan. You know, I tried to even it out once. I did. I took off my shirt and got some sun. Yeah, but the rest of me just turns pink. And apparently chicks do not like pink dudes. I did not know that. Uh, being from Arizona, I'm a bit of a homer. A bit of a homer. I'm a D-backs fan. Go D-backs. Nobody? Tough crowd, tough crowd. No, but, but uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was at a ball game. I had my son with me. I, I do this when he's 17. He's like, I'm here. I had my son with me, and I uh, had a little situation happen. I want to tell you all about it. Um, it's about the third inning. Diamondbacks are losing. That's okay. We're out in the left field bleachers, and I hear this. War penis. War penis here. I spin around and I look, and there's one of those guys, you know, carrying one of those trays, holding up a bag of peanuts. Now, I don't know who it is in the Diamondbacks organization that gives these people the jobs and walk up and down the stairs to sell shit, but I don't think the guy with the lisp should be selling more peanuts. But he says it again, more peanuts. And I spin around and I go, hey, and he goes, you sir, you want some more peanuts? I say, no, I want you to enunciate. <laughs> he got mad and he walked off, and I was like, eh, whatever, back to baseball. <laughs> Two innings later, when you know, my son looks over at me and goes, hey, Dad, can we get some peanuts? I was like, really? <laughs> After what just, you ripped? absolutely, son, we will get you some peanuts, absolutely. So I waited three minutes. Here he comes. More peanuts? I'm like, Hey! And he goes, you sir, you want I want two! And he's like, you want two warm penis? And I'm like, no, but I'll take two sacks of nuts. <laughs> Fuck, you got me, Mr. Peanut Thunder Guy. It's crazy. Being, being from Arizona, we have a lot of privileges. We do. Um, we get to play golf 365 days a year, which is great. Especially if you got my group of friends, because 365 is pretty much our golf score. <laughs> it's an all-day adventure. But, we're, but, but two weekends ago, we're out. We're on the third hole. My buddy goes, hey, Raj, guess what? What? I got some pot brownies. Pot brownies? Really? Pot brownies? And I grab one and I start eating. It tasted pretty good. I'm like, hey, dude, what's in this? You know, he goes, you know, flour, egg, sugar. No, man, what kind of weed? He goes, oh, it's extract of purple kush. I said, damn, that's pretty good weed. I'm starting to get some little buzz already. What else is in it? He's like, you know, flour, sugar, eggs, baking chocolate, marijuana, margarine, and I'm like, ah! He goes, aha. Uh -huh. I was like, yeah, I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> we, we got done playing golf. And, yeah, I was, I was a little stoned, I'll admit it. Um, couldn't go home because the wife would get pissed. Yeah. So I went to this place everybody goes when they're stoned. I went to the mall. I started walking into the mall, and there's this woman walking in front of me, you know, just blatantly abusing some yoga pants. I mean, these things were sheer. I mean, I could clearly see the cellulite doubles on her ass. Apparently, her insurance did not cover hail damage.
<laughs> but even more abusive than that, folks, even more abusive than that, that written on that ample posterior was the word princess. And apparently black chicks do not like it when you read their ass words out loud. I did. And yeah, bitch spun around real quick, paused, just for a moment. Just long enough to figure out whether or not I was fuckable. Nope. I mean, I would have, but she was like, I don't do pink guys. <laughs> then after that, that, that sparse moment, she points right at me. And loud as hell, she goes, you pervert! And I was like, stunned for a moment. And then I saw all these faces turn around and start looking. And I was like, man, I'm a comedian. I can't let her get away with that. That's not right. So I think real quick and I go, hey, you can't, you can't call me a pervert. Let me explain why. First off, if you're going to wear words on your ass, you no longer have the right to call me a pervert because I enjoy reading. Secondly, if you're five foot one, 400 pounds in yoga pants, you ain't here to do yoga. Yogurt, maybe. <laughs> so obviously I have a problem meeting women. Long, you know, I've been married twice, once divorced, yeah, not Mormon. You know, and, and before I got married the second time, I decided I needed to come up with some rules to find the perfect woman. You sir, you understand what I mean? Find the perfect woman. You gotta. So, ladies, just so you know, there's qualifications to be the perfect woman. I mean, you have to be socially coordinated. Okay? You have to be physically proportionate. And you have to have really low standards in men. That's why I dated redneck chicks. Well, that because they're easy to find. You know, you go out to your local country bar. Find the girl wearing them super tight jeans. You know, the jeans that leave nothing to the imagination, except my imagination. Camel toe. Yeah, doesn't matter how loud the bar gets, just read her lips. Uh, met one of those girls one night. Yeah, took her back to her place, and dating tip fellas, take them back to, your, to her place. You know, that way they don't know where you live, you know, moms. back to her place for making out on the couch and I felt it was that time to pop that top button of them super tight jeans see now I wish somebody would put like a warning light you know or a sign you know that reads you know warning contents under pressure <laughs> because when you pop that top button it's like popping open a tube of buttermilk biscuits you know pop boom You know, and you start peeling them down, and you got that tsunami wave of flesh coming over the side. But apparently this chick had meant to meet a guy like me that night. One with absolutely no morals. No self-worth at all. She had gone and worn her lacy white panties. And I pulled them off and instantly realized that the waxing trend had completely passed her by. She had a mullet. <laughs> Folks, it was an interesting night for me, I'll tell you that. That night, I got drunk. I got laid. And that night, I learned how to twist cornrows. <laughs> my, my name's Roger Bridlow, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you for coming out. <laughs>